Hi there, so I'm at Chartwell today, which is actually the home of Winston Churchill for the last 40 years of his life. And what a lot of people don't know is that he was actually a prolific painter. So we're about to see the biggest collection of his work that exists. Let's go. Chartwell is one of the busier National Trust properties and you can tell as soon as you get there because the car park is pretty full and there's definitely quite a lot of people milling around. It's one of the less relaxing properties I would say but one of the more interesting. Winston Churchill purchased his house in 1922 and he used it as his main base during the 20s and 30s. He used it for painting, writing and entertaining. Chartwell has absolutely stunning gardens and views. And actually, Sir Winston Churchill and Lady Churchill were both keen amateur gardeners. So this was the Gavin Jones Waterfall and uh, it was originally part of the 1948 Chelsea Flower Show where Clementine Churchill first saw it and she liked it so much that the designer gave it to her as a gift. So this was once a swimming pool that the Churchills absolutely loved, although I don't think anyone's swimming in it now other than the resident black swans that love to visit. We were given this cute little invitation when we signed in. I'm a National Trust member, so I'm doing my best to get around all the properties. This is one of three Golden Orf fish ponds. There are three ponds that actually lead into one another and they are filled with descendants of the exotic fish that Churchill himself brought from Harrods after seeing them in the 1930s. Chartwell was purchased by Churchill in 1922 for the cost of 5,000 Great British Pounds. Can you imagine if you could get something like this for 5,000 pounds today, hey? Over the next 15 years, the Churchills undertook several renovations at the cost of £30,000 to improve the property. It was no secret that Churchill's financial situation was often unstable and by 1938 he was almost forced to sell the property for financial reasons. By the end of the war in 1946, Churchill just couldn't afford to live there anymore and 17 of his wealthy friends got together and purchased a property for approximately 45 to 50,000 pounds and donated it to the National Trust. The deal, however, did come with some stipulations, one of which was that the Churchills could live at Chartwell for the rest of their lives at a nominal rent of 350 pounds per year. Churchill also requested that a ginger cat named Jock with a white chest and four white feet could always be found at Chartwell. The National Trust have kept their end of the bargain and they are currently on Jock the 7th. In May 2020, Chartwell welcomed Jock the 7th, who was a six month old rescue kitten from the RSPCA. He was previously known as Sunshine, but obviously renamed to fit the brief. And I'm so gutted that I didn't see him when I was visiting. I did look for him. But the first room that was open to us was the drawing room. And here you can see a painting by Claude Monet that was gifted to Churchill. So this room is rather informal and it's where the Churchill family would relax, host their guests, and where Winston would play the card game Bazique. This is a painting of the Italian gardens from Hever Castle. The house is full of memorabilia and black and white photos documenting Churchill's life. And also his paintings are everywhere. He actually gets a lot of flack for his paintings where people don't think they're that good, but I actually really liked them. He never sold his work and if somebody expressed an interest or liking to it, he just gave it to them. Wouldn't you have loved to be there at the time? I love this model of Sir Winston Churchill, which was a model of the one that was in the House of Commons. They certainly had some striking wallpaper back in the day. I didn't quite get to capture it, but there's actually areas where they'd done the ceiling in this wallpaper as well. So this was Lady Churchill's bedroom and she spent many hours in here dealing with the correspondence and household accounts as well as writing at her desk. One of the last photographs ever taken of Sir Winston Churchill stands on the desk in Lady Churchill's room and it's also found next to a photograph of her daughter Marigold who sadly died in 1921, aged only two years old. So they have this room laid out for a lot of Churchill's memorabilia including a lot of his medals as well.
so when you get to the hallway, they set you a little bit of a challenge. So to set the scene, it was 1945 and Churchill had just lost the elections and he was feeling pretty down about it. And his friend Field Marshal Alexander invited him to come and spend time with him at Lake Como in a place that he'd just bought. He said, why not come down and have a paint off? So one of these is Churchill's and one of them is his friend's. See if you can work out whose is whose. I actually got it right immediately. I feel you can tell by the brush strokes. I loved this one here. It was definitely one of my favorites uh, with the buildings with the holes in from the bombs. So on the first floor, there were three guest rooms which were converted in 1966 to a museum room and a uniform room. Churchill had actually always planned on creating a small museum at Chartwell to share the many pictures and gifts that he'd received around the world. It's also full of quotes by Winston Churchill. So Winston Churchill actually made all his money as a writer or from various inheritance or loans by friends because he was so appalling at keeping money. So back in the day, members of parliament were actually not paid. So Churchill did have to sustain himself money wise. He was an incredibly extravagant spender. He lived way above his means. He went on extravagant holidays. He was an avid gambler and he was regularly having to be bailed out by his wealthy friends. So this was Winston Churchill's uniform room and you can see a number of the outfits that he wore for various occasions. So this was Winston Churchill's study and workshop. This is where he spent the majority of his time, even moving a bed into here in his later years so he could get up and work straight away. So he found it easier actually to work standing up and he would often dictate to his secretary who was sat at the large mahogany writing desk. Cartwell served as a working home and Churchill actually employed eight secretaries in the house. It's how he managed to write so many books. So he used these cuddly toys here to mark off when he'd taken a book and he would uh, take the cuddly toy out when he replaced the book. So here you can see a photograph of a lion. So this lion was actually gifted to Winston Churchill. Obviously he couldn't take care of it, so it was donated to London Zoo. The lion was called Rota and it was kept in a cage in Sir Winston Churchill's garden for a short period of time. And it was actually tame enough to let curious visitors touch him and reach inside the cage but I think it's best for everybody that he was uh, given to the London Zoo. The lion was, however, immortalised after its death because it was stuffed and sold to an avid collector and it continues to exist even today in a huge glass cabinet. So downstairs is my favourite room in this whole house, the dining room. I absolutely love this room. I think it's breathtaking. So the circular dining tables were actually designed by the Churchills. The dining room was used for hosting intimate gatherings and it's known that circular tables are much better for socialising. 
it stands to reason actually because it's just so much easier to talk to everybody at the table and not just be stuck with the people to to either side of you so not only did the churchills host friends and family in this room but some of the biggest names of the 20th century have eaten in here. So this still life is obviously one of Churchill's and it was actually painted, well, the idea for the painting came on Christmas day when he had this huge bottle of brandy and he got all the children to run around the house and collect all the bottles. And then the next day on Boxing Day, he painted this still life. You can even see the same lamps so this is the Golden Rose book and it was commissioned in 1958 by the Churchill's children to record the various golden and yellow roses in the Golden Rose Avenue that were created to celebrate their parents' golden wedding anniversary. So before you leave, they have this final room with a lot more memorabilia. It's all split off into different sections like home life, war, writing career. Here is a list of the friends and admirers who got together in order to buy Chartwell and donate it to the National Trust. Winston Churchill absolutely adored this garden and it was the view over the Kentish Weald that actually persuaded him to buy it in the first place. He in fact bought Chartwell without his wife's knowledge and he had to bring her round after he'd already made the purchase. He started with his children and it worked in finally bringing her around to love the place as well. As the extravagant spender that he was, he spent more money doing this house up than the original building even cost. So they also had orchards here. Now these aren't the original apple trees, but the National Trust have tried to make sure some of them are the same types that the Churchills would have grown whilst living there. There's a selection of culinary and dessert apples and they include the Bramley, Pippin, Crab Sunset and Duchess. And they've also planted a Winston apple tree in the main orchard and that will be something for future visitors to enjoy. So if you go after the September harvest, they also offer Chartwell apple juice in the shop. So I was a little bit early on this visit, but maybe if you go now, you'll find some. So here we come to one of the main features of Chartwell, which was Churchill's art studio. So it was actually built in the 1930s and then expanded in the 1950s. It was a space for Churchill to be able to paint without interruption, but was also a blessing for his wife as it stopped her husband dropping paint on the carpets in the house. As an artist myself, I can see exactly how frustrated she could be with that because it's pretty messy. So the studio is home to the largest collection of Winston Churchill's paintings and they've left the paints and the canvas out waiting to be finished as if he's just walked out for a tea break so he actually started painting quite late in life he was 41 when he first picked up the hobby and he always saw it as a hobby he never sold his works he actually gave them away if people liked them Churchill actually suffered from quite bad depression and he found painting to be one of the best ways to manage his bouts of what he referred to as the black dog. He painted well over 500 paintings in his lifetime and he would even take his paints on holiday and paint wherever they went, hence why you'll see quite a lot of exotic landscapes along with those of Chartwell itself. He was particularly fond of the light in southern France and you'll see quite a lot of paintings here from that area. 
So during his lifetime, he did actually win a prize for his painting. So he anonymously entered a painting into the Royal Academy competition and it won a prize, which he was quite proud of. So in this painting, you can see the black swans. Now, Chartwell did have some black swans. They were first kept there in the 1920s after they were gifted to Churchill. And there's still some there today, if you're lucky enough to see them. Churchill actually once remarked that when he gets to heaven, he means to spend a considerable portion of his first million years in painting as to get to the bottom of the subject. So Winston Churchill loved reflecting by water and you'll see there's quite a few ponds at Chartwell. He regularly used these ponds as inspiration for his painting and his very last painting, in fact, was of the goldfish in one of the upper ponds. This recently came up to auction with an estimate of of 50 to 80,000 pounds considering he never sold a painting in his lifetime and only gave them away he falls into that category of artists that make a lot more money from their paintings after their death maybe if he'd have started selling them earlier they could have helped with some of his financial woes that plagued him for the majority of his life This was one of my personal favourite parts of the garden. I couldn't find much about it, but I just thought it was so beautiful and such an amazing place to just sit and relax. And I really enjoyed this artwork of the horses and the battle around the edge. I don't know if anybody in the comments can tell me what this was from or what it represents. So we're now heading towards Lady Churchill's Rose Garden, which was designed by Clementine herself. The National Trust, where possible, have tried to use similar roses to the ones that she would have used back in the day, like Rosa Ice Cream and Rosa Pink Parfait. There's also this centerpiece of Wisteria, which I obviously miss the blooms, but will be absolutely stunning when it's covered in purple blossoms. So this is actually called the Churchill Rose and it was commissioned by Churchill College in Cambridge as part of their 50th anniversary celebrations. In order to select the perfect species, Winston Churchill's youngest daughter, Lady Mary Soames, was invited to choose a rose from a number of new varieties that were being bred by the Peter Beald Nursery in Norfolk. She settled on this beautiful apricot shade the colours fade to a paler peach and yellow as they begin to open. The rose was officially launched at the Chelsea Flower Show in 2011 and the Churchill Rose was gifted to only four places across the UK. Those included 10 Downing Street, the Cambridge Botanic Gardens, the Masters and Fellows Garden at Cambridge University and Chartwell where it sits beautifully here in Lady Churchill's Rose Garden. So if you have time after the house, then it's really great to come and do the woodland walk. So there's lots of really cool things. I think they're mostly kiddie things, like the tree house is just a replica of one that Churchill had in his own garden for the kids, but it's still really amazing and it's such a beautiful walk. You go really deep into the woodland. So this is a model of a caravan that was lived in by a lady called Mrs Donkey Jack. She was a homeless lady who had nowhere to live after the death of her husband, Donkey Jack. They had been living on common land, but after his death, she was evicted when she became a widow. Churchill gave permission for her to live on his estate in what was thought to be a converted railway carriage.
a lot of the stop-offs are activities for children, but some of them are definitely still interesting for adults. I did really enjoy this tree house. It's a replica of one that Winston Churchill first built for his children. You can go inside and explore and it actually goes up two levels and it's got some views of the woodland from the first level. It's a bit dark, so it didn't come out that well in film. So before leaving, as with every National Trust property, there's a shop to have a look around and there's a cafe where you can grab a drink or some food. I do love the National Trust shops. They do mostly sell very similar things, but they have some very cute animal ornaments and little bits that you can put on your balcony and garden. I have a few things in mine. They had a nice water filter at this one, which you don't see very often. Beware of the wasps at this one though, but definitely don't kill them. They're pollinators just like bees. <laughs> 